So this paper actually um, comes about out of my work in a scientific archive. So I'm going to deal not so much with the, um, the archive itself, but with a set of kind of processes um, that I am trying to in some way um, suggest are provocations for uh, thinking the future. So sensing the future, Landsat 7 has an image problem. Since, since 1972, a continuous flow of multispectral spectral information has streamed from 705 kilometers above the Earth's surface to ground stations throughout the world, transmitting image data of land masses from an orbital pass made every 16 days. The synoptic coverage of the Landsat Earth Observation Satellite Program has produced the most comprehensive archive of the topological dynamics of our planet for more than 33 years. However, on May 31, 2003, the raw data captured and relayed disclosed a remarkable feature when decoded. In place of the usual full-color visuals that would typically emerge upon processing, Images forcefully striated stri 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 with, di with diagonal slashes appeared. A sensor on the Landsat 7 enhanced thematic map mapper plus, the world's most accurately calibrated Earth observing satellite, had failed, resulting in a 22% loss in overall data. Since that time, all Landsat 7 images are traversed by a diagonal pattern of dropout. The malfunction of the scanline corrector, which removes the zigzag motion of the imaging field, had introduced a new visual characteristic. While the Landsat 7 continues to acquire raw data from terrestrial scenes, up to a quarter of this image information has to be retroactively filled in with data originating from other similar scans, producing in effect a hybrid in which data gleaned from different temporalities is, inter is interlaced to create the semblance of a continuous image. Quote, to fill, this is, uh, this is uh, a quote from NASA, to fulfill the expectations of the user community for full coverage single scenes, data from multiple acquisitions are being merged to resolve the SLC off data gaps, An end quote. This reparative procedure, or what I prefer to call atmospheric correction in a conceptual nod to another method of satellite image enhancement, is by its very nature, nature an act of technical subtru subterfuge, but not one directed towards sabotaging history. On the contrary, its motivation is recuperation and repair, filling in the gaps of one Landsat image with data assembled from another scan taken sometimes weeks later creates an abstract electronic representation that radically recalibrates the temporal and visual continuity of the image event and calls its indexicality, its ability to account directly for the topological history out of which it arose, into question. As such, it also raises certain related philosophic provocations. The diagonal gaps in the uncorrected Landsat 7 imagery are literally placeholders for receiving incoming data from the future. The failure of the SCL in producing a pattern of voided space registers, by default, the virtuality of atmospheric events yet to come. Gaps in a satellite image taken on February 9th, um, 2011, Gaps taken in a satellite image taken on February 9, 2011, are thus an inducement to a future that will ultimately feed February 25th back into the system as its digital doppelganger. So here we see the original image and then what, what effectively becomes the corrected image. Brian Masumi has suggested that preemption acts not to inhibit a future event from taking place, as per its conventional military formulation, but rather to bring the future into the present as an effect. He, he, he writes, preemption does not prevent, it effects, it induces the event in effect. Rather than acting in the present to avoid an occurrence in the future, preemption brings the future into the present, end quote. 
Unlike Jean Baudrillard's thesis of simulation, in which media systems overcode the real to the extent that they end up supplanting it, preemption doesn't necessarily annul the present. Instead, it strives to overlay the future onto the present as a perceptual event. The example that Masumi uh, turns to is the current system of spectral warning codes used in the United States to alert citizens to imminent danger and potential terrorist threat. The receptor body of the American public, he argues, is so attuned to living in a state of permanent co-read anxiety that they experience the fear of an imminent danger as if it has already happened. The dread streaming from the future is internalized within the space of the here and now and thus is experienced as an actuality in the present before anything has or will happen. The logic of this transaction between the future and the present does seem to hinge upon confidence in what the future might hold as a likely event. When error correction is built into a digital processing system, it is with the understanding that the system is governed by a probability function that certain events will repeatedly come into being. While it would be misleading to such suggest that the black zigzags bring about the felt effects of the future anterior, it is useful to refract um, Musumi's conceptualization of preemption as that which induces the future and the present in the, uh, through the post-processing regime of Landsat 7 imagery. The very presence of dropout in the images operates as a kind of latency that gestures toward the, react, the retroactive repotentialization of the present by way of the future. The capacity for images to be read against the grain of representation is a condition available to all photographic materials, but is made explicit when images are composited out of multiple different on-the-ground realities. Although the image or satellite scanning event must be retroactively recomposed to create a specular whole, the preemptive di dimensions of this corrective, corrective are not bound to the same uh, program but cut across the smooth plane of visuality to expose, or at the very least, trouble the inherent fiction of the image. Satellite data, like all digital information, exists firstly as binary code and requires several stages of processing before it can recompose itself into a comprehensible image. Because the processing of raw data gleaned from remote vision technologies is so complex and lacking in agreed upon best practices, a whole new industry has assigned with error correcting its image data has emerged. Notably organized around a distinction between what is seen by machines and how something is processed so that it can be seen by humans. What is clear with regards to the Landsat 7 imagery is the extent of uncertainty that might be present when algorithmic tools are tasked with turning information drawn from different sources into a coherent representational schema or image. While atmospheric correction is generally designed to remove effects that obscure the surface properties of satellite imagery, such as reflectance, in the case of the flawed Landsat 7 sensor, it would seem that its entire archive of raw scans are equally available for use as algorithmic correctives such should pixel attributes align themselves in a relationship of relative symmetry between two discrete image events. At the time of this writing, I'm not entirely sure how the decision to match and interlace two different images is technically arrived at, whether this is determined by on-the-ground weather conditions or via a random sampling of pixels. But we can already see how this act of data merging across time and space might prove problematic should the image be called to testify within a legal context, given the law's need for un unadulterated Im evidence. Even those agencies offering post-processing solutions recognize the compromised nature of such a corrected satellite image and make available the source of its retroactive fix by providing metadata in the form of a bit, mas bit mask that details the change in the original value of the pixel. However, this disclosure doesn't mean that their pixelated merger is such that relations can be re recoded with impunity. But in making legible the disjunction between temporalities and events, 
we can start to read a micropolitics back into the processing of pixels. By politics here, I mean, quite simply, a projection into the future that imagines a different version of events, new aesthetic ideas, to that of the present. The binary bit mask, in returning singularity to each pixel, effectively unmasks the fallacy of certainty that scientific images often carry, reminding us that the present, February 9th, 2011, can't seamlessly slip into the future, February 25th, 2011, as merely a difference in degree organized by the time of month, but should be understood as inaugurating a difference in kind between two different atmospheric image events, and thus two competing versions of history. This is why, writes Elizabeth Gross, the question of history remains a volatile one, not simply tied to getting the facts of the, not simply tied to getting the facts of the past sorted out and agree, agreed upon. It is about the production of, of conceivable futures, the future understood not as that which is simply constituted in the present, but rather as that which diverges, diverges from the present. End quote. Politics enters the visual field not simply at the level of representation the content displayed in the image, but at the structural level of its information acquisition, processing, and transmission. At the moment when pure data is captured by sensors, transformed into binary code, assigned pixel values, algorithmically corrected, composited to produce a digital image, saved into a standardized file format, and transmitted to recombine with other circuits of technical and social assembly. This is what I'm calling the micropolitics of image processing. All the, points of, um, all the points of potential transformation that allow difference in this politics to enter. Gilles Deleuze has argued that it is only the metamorphosis or redistribution of singularities that forms a history and that each combination and each distribution is an event. Transposing this provocation to the digital event suggests that each juncture of information processing from data capture through to conversion and signal relay is itself characterized by a, by a set of singularities that express conditions attached to that event, which in turn bear upon problematics specific to their manner of dis dispensation. This is the political dimension of the processing event. The question of politics following Deleuze arises out of the problem of information processing, and these problems are themselves enveloped in the question of the political as their enabling condition. Quoting Deleuze, just as solutions do not suppress problems, but on the contrary, discover in them the subsisting conditions without which they would have no sense, Answers do not at all suppress, nor do they saturate the question which persists in all answers, end quote. While the problem of the damaged sensor found its practical solution in atmospheric correction, filling in the gaps, the solution opens up a conceptual breach that allows me to reflect upon the micropolitics of algorithmic processing vis-a-vis -vis machine-made images, specifically remote sensing satellite images. To extend Deleuze's provocation to digital processing more generally, one could say that although the operative modality of such processing is considered to be a problem of calculation between ones and zeros, processing is not in and of itself a problem requiring our remedial intercession. Rather, our task is that of problematizing human events, which in the case of the faulty Landsat 7 sensor come into being through the transmissional re regimes of data processing and the networks in which such data is made to circulate as an expression of specific terrestrial events. Satellite image analysis has, as we know, produced discourses that have been powerfully operative in influencing, the in, in shaping the contours of the post 9-11 uh, landscape, uh, perhaps notably, most notably with the uh, UN Security Council Resolution 1441 that led to the invasion of Iraq. 
and yet they have no actual, so satellite images have no actual standalone legal traction, in large part because they are not subject to any standardized methods of data processing. The uneven treatment of raw satellite data combined with the algorithmic complexities associated with transforming this coded material into images and the widespread conviction that such non-human modes of sensing can provide unambiguous representations of conditions on the ground position satellite imagery as paradigmatic to a discussion that aims to locate the political within processing. Five minutes, okay. Many theorists have argued that new perceptual modalities facilitated by computational modes of seeing from satellite and drone vision to the geophysics of ground sounding have so thoroughly abstracted a vision that images can no longer guarantee the position of an observer in a real optically perceived world with the consequence that the conduits of information transfer no longer require the human as their privileged point of reference, an argument that can, in part, be traced to much earlier developments in the industrialization of vision, such as the discovery of x-rays, for example. Digital images are increasingly also manufactured by machines to be read and interpreted exclusively by other machines. The proliferation of CCTV data is a case in point, as the sheer magnitude of image capture has necessitated the outsourcing of its low-level uh, image analytics to other automated scanning processes. This substitution of the human traditions of seeing by technical means is rendered even more complicated when the images are the consequence of elaborate non-visual techniques of observation requiring multi multiple algorithmic interventions before their data can be convincingly reconstituted into a unified pictorial, uh, pictorial field. Something that becomes all the more important when visuals are mobilized as, in as indexical truth claims that are called into evidence or rallied in support of statements that provoke action in and on the world. I'm, just gonna, I'm going to jump forward a little bit to give you some, ex um, I think I'll move a little bit more quickly. So one of the questions I would have is, is seeing when derived from numeric code freed from any indexical ob um, obligations to account convincingly for the histories out of which it emerged? Um, even these are the uh, very uh, well-known satellite images from uh, uh, when Colin Powell testified in the UN Security Council. And obviously, a satellite image that then becomes increasingly uh, produced as a kind of graphic image. And also, this image from the Balkan Wars of 1999, which satellites were um, used to reveal the disturbance of mass graves in Izbica, Kosovo. I think I will try and. I've got a couple more minutes, is that it? So maybe I will just jump ahead um, very quickly. In order for a digital image to have any legal traction as evidence, approved procedures that guarantee the security of image data, what we call chain of custody, and standardize its processing from code to pixels, audit trails, are required to secure its legal determination as evidence. Given this predicament, should the stability and integrity of information transfer therefore be held accountable to an originary event, or does the very condition of a highly deregulated commercial satellite market combined with post-processing vagaries render the truth claims of satellite imagery sus suspect at best? Certainly, the long-standing view of the photographic image as objectively congruent with a given external reality still holds within it many contemporary discourses, including the juridical, even if it fails to convince within critical photo studies. The point is not to rehearse the contestation of such truth claims, a debate that is already fully worked out, but rather to reflect upon the provocations that new modes of technical witnessing raise as specifically ethical imperatives for contemporary image taking and image making practices. I'm going to, I think I will um, read two more paragraphs and then wrap up. 
The question remains, to what extent are digital processes imminent to history and thus able to narrate the particularities of events that enter the circuitry of technical systems as data and exit via images? How might we begin to understand the ways in which coding practices, by virtue of their deep embeddedness in a numerical milieu, which consigns their operations to a sphere of relative invisibility to humans, is also deeply impl implicated in shaping the kinds of representations that ultimately emerge, and with them decisions to act in and on the world. To begin to answer this question, we need to work back forensically through all the nodes and points of data capture, conversion, and recompression, including their transmissional relays with other machinic assemblies. This is what I've begun to do with my analysis of satellite image processing in resisting the natural tendency to focus exclusively on higher level image outputs and shifting my attention to the handling of metadata, for example, fixing the phenomena of the zigzag. Through these kinds of procedures, I can begin to uh, track the ways in which different modes of processing intensify connections between data and events. There are, of course, many other satellite image fixes that I could have drawn upon to make similar points, such as orthorectification, which adjusts distortion or, fa and, or false coloration, which is used quite extensively and is used to highlight and contrast vegetative uh, features. This is the, probably the most common uh, mode of kind of uh, satellite sort of image tampering, if you will. However, the faulty sensor and the algorithmic post-processing of Landsat 7 images offers a singularly useful example to explore how the various stages of processing are themselves active agents in shaping the varial contours of the image event. If satellite systems and remote imaging machines are conceptualized merely as delivery systems for data, then we lose an opportunity to think about the ways in which such technologies are conditioned by and conditional to the specificities of history as both capable of making history as well as becoming a condition for producing new histories. And I'll return to a quote by Elizabeth Gross in wrapping up. The future that field to which all ethics and politics is directed, insofar as they are attempts at amelioration of the past and present, is the condition and very mode of, politi of present political, ethical, and legal action and effectivity. Examining the data flows and intensity between machinic processes enables us to redistribute the narrative terrain in which a given image might have settled. An activity that gives, for, gives rise to new questions and also new problems, and perhaps even a new conception of politics that emerges out of gaps. And I will leave it there. Thank you.